Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he was rested and was refreshed. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. So God in these verses is telling us, just like he said in verse number 17, that the Sabbath is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. And we know that the children of Israel were his chosen people on the earth at this particular time to reveal his will to all the world. So we already know that in Genesis chapter 2, which was discussed earlier, at the seventh day of this earth's history is when the Sabbath was given. So the Sabbath has, has existed since that very time, and it will always exist as a sign between God and his people that we know that he is the true God who has created all of the world. The Sabbath is God's sign. The Sabbath is God's mark. We now turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20. Ezekiel, chapter 20, we're going to read verses 12 and 20 as we solidify the fact that the Sabbath is God's mark of authority. Verse 12, Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. In verse number 20, Hallow my Sabbaths, and they will be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. So we can see from these verses that God is telling us that the Sabbath is his mark, is his sign between him and his people, that they know him to be the God of gods, the God who created the heavens and the earth. Now, the mark of the beast is not currently an issue, but one day it will be an issue. And if we turn back to Revelation chapter 13, it tells us some things that are going to take place after the mark of the beast becomes an issue. And if we read verses 16 and 17, of Revelation chapter 13, it says, He calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So when the mark of the beast becomes an issue, no one will be able to buy or sell except he have the mark of the beast. And if you don't have the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy and you will not be able to sell. So in, in other words, you're going to be persecuted and they're going to try to starve you to death. So from these facts, we understand that the mark of the beast currently is not an issue, but one day it indeed will become an issue. So behind all of this, we want to see Lucifer wanting this worship that he wanted in heaven Lucifer is now no more. He is now Satan. Satan wanting worship. Satan wanting to be like the Most High. And so he tries to get it through this system of Babylon. Then Babylon is going to be the one that is the mastermind behind the setting up of this particular mark of the beast. Now it says those who receive the mark of the beast in their forehead or in their hand. That's Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. When it is talking about the forehead, it's talking about the mind. Those who truly believe Sunday to be the Sabbath day, contrary to all the scriptural evidence, and they continue to believe that Sunday is the Sabbath, Sunday is the Sabbath, they won't believe that Saturday is the true Sabbath, in the end, these people will receive the mark of the beast in their foreheads because they truly believe Sunday to be the Sabbath. But for other people who know that Saturday is the true, true Sabbath, but do not want to adhere to this particular day because they know they are going to be persecuted, these particular people are going to receive the mark of the beast in their hand. And the hand represents the works 
They're going to do what they have to do. They're going to work on the true Sabbath. They're going to do what they have to do on God's true Sabbath in order to avoid persecution. They're going to receive the mark of the beast in their hand. Now, people might say, you know, this can never happen because of the fact that religious liberty is enjoyed here in the United States and in other countries. But let me just read this to you. This comes from the website thetrumpet.com. And this is from the month of November of the year 2008. It says, The Catholic Church wants Sunday observance enshrined in EU law. Now that EU just means European Union. The European Parliament is debating changes to its working time directive. The Vatican wants a clause in this law that would force every citizen in the European Union to rest on Sunday. A hideously socialist piece of legislation, the working time directive currently makes it illegal for those working, with some exceptions, in the EU to work for more than 48 hours a week. Workers in the EU are currently allowed to opt out of its provisions. The bill is being revised. During the second reading in October, seven members of the European Parliament tabled an amendment saying that the minimum rest period shall in principle include Sunday. The Brussels-based Commission of the Bishops' Conferences of the European Community agrees, recommending the directive should say the minimal weekly rest must include Sunday. So you can see the ambitions of the Roman Church. In this directive that is really, I believe, aiming towards goodwill towards the people so they won't overwork themselves and so they have time for family relationships and whatnot. The Roman Church is trying to slip in their own legislation or their own additions to this legislation so that it includes Sunday as the minimal rest period. So you can see the Roman power trying to work through the political powers to further their false teachings. And this is really reminiscent of, of the Dark Ages. In the Dark Ages, the church had ruled the state. And being that the church ruled the state, they used the enforcement and they used the power of the state to enforce their dogmas. And all of those who did not go along with these dogmas, of course, were persecuted. That's why 50 to 100 million people were killed during the Dark Ages. And so, they're, in other words, they're trying to legislate obedience, and that is directly contrary to Christian principles. Christ never forced anyone to worship him, but he gave all the freedom of choice, even in heaven with Lucifer. Lucifer didn't, want, didn't have to worship if he didn't want to, and God did not force him. So God never forces. So whenever force is used, you always know that the devil is behind it. And this is what they're, they were trying to do in the European Union in order to slip in the clause that says the weekly period of rest must include Sunday. And they're also trying to say that it will be unlawful for someone not to rest on Sunday. And of course, if someone transgresses the law or breaks the law, then of course there must be some type of punishment that is inflicted upon the lawbreaker. And here in the United States, many states have on their books what are known as Sunday blue laws. And these Sunday Blue Laws prohibit certain things and certain activities from t taking place on Sunday. So as the Mark of the Beast draws closer, you can see that these Sunday Blue Laws will start to be enforced here in the United States. And as these things start to take place, we will know that the wall of separation between church and state is being eroded and broken down. Now, many of you might be saying, especially those of you who are watching here in the United States, this can never happen in the United States because we all have the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our own consciences, and these things will never be forced upon us. Well, I only need to draw your minds back to what has taken place after September 11. Some of the rights that we have enjoyed prior to 9-11, we no longer enjoy because of the fact that 9-11 happened, and now in order to secure the homeland, Certain things need to be taken away from us. Certain privileges need to be taken away from us in order to ensure our quote-unquote security. So this is a good example for us to remember. 
Now let's go to the first Sunday law. 